breaking it down into things, and they're quantized. Well, the whole thing is it's an automobile, and it does certain kinds of function. The same thing is true with information. The information <clears throat> in the holographic universe is assumed to be at every point in the universe, and then the way you res re resolve it, with looking through a microscope or a telescope, the way you choose to bring that into fruition or consciousness is in one of the eight basic forms. Talk about auto-suggestion. I notice in your book you have uh, hypnosis sessions, rules for auto-suggestion. Auto-suggestion auto, yeah, means auto what? Auto-suggestion is like generally for self-hypnosis, and another word could be uh, 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 affirmation, where I'm getting stronger and stronger with every breath I take. I'm feeling stronger and healthier. Um, the affirmation is an auto suggestion where you're trying to reinforce yourself. Uh, the way I basically will try to explain it to most people is to say, uh, you are what you eat, which means if you're feeling you can't do something, don't say it, because by saying it, it goes into your ear and you reinforce that belief that you can't do something. And that's what led to the whole field of neuro-linguistic programming. There were rules of the road on what you should and shouldn't do in the way the brain, different than consciousness, the way the brain heard things. It doesn't mean uh, in sound, let's say. When you say something, if you say it this way over that way, uh, it will have a more reinforcing effect uh, and is stronger acting as a, as a food because when you say something, you're listening to yourself, and that is a form of auto-suggestion. And so it reinforces a belief. Uh, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I am doing this. That's a positive affirmation or auto-suggestion. I remember this vividly as a younger person when I had a tournament tennis career of 13 years. You played tennis? I used to. Heavily, heavily, heavily. And I was experimenting with something during a certain portion of that time. And I turned to my mother and I said, I'm going to check something out, but I will tell you one thing. And she says, what? I said, this tournament is mine. I am yeah, taking, that's called eating their brains. I remember that. I, 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 I just <laughs> said to her, I said, this is my tournament. I own it. I'm going to win it. I'm taking it. And it's mine. You're and I remember. When you do that. Pardon me? You're a tough one to beat when you do that. Well, all I can tell you is that it you works. It works. Yeah. It works. It, it even alters your own vibration. That's called beating your opponent before you get, even get them on the well, court. Well, that's what tennis <laughs> That's what tennis is. Nine-tenths yeah, of it right. is before you even walk in and how right. you are on You've the court. You've already got them beaten. It's called eating their brain. I remember when I played at Forest Hills, we used to do that. And I got beaten at Forest Hills by someone that wasn't nearly as good as me because <laughs> I had a doubt when I saw those huge crowds. It made me insecure. I wasn't used to being, quote, tournament tough. Is that the right word? And I, because of the doubt, I fell. But in doing so, boy, did I learn a lot about myself and how we defeat ourselves. It's not the opponent that defeated us. Yeah, it's all lying with us. Question about page 149 of your book on the non-local mind. I want to go back to this. Okay. You say here, nothing is really known about the physical mechanism of ESP or what is now referred to as anomalous cognition. No one knows what modulates performance. Explain again what the non-local mind is. Well, you, we always used to think that our body is where we stopped in the universe and that the universe was out there and that our body and everything inside it was us. But with the advent of resonance and the concept of dialogue with the universe, like with Schumann's resonance. There are frequency bands on the Earth based on the geometry and the physical geometry of the Earth that lead uh, birds to be able to have a sense of direction and location. How does that work? Well, there's a dialogue going on with electromagnetic fields around the Earth, Schumann's resonance and so on, that allow 
for the migration of animals. And they're in touch with that, whereas we have somehow atrophied or ignored or excluded those pieces of information as relevant to our survival. And as such, consciousness blocks out looking at those individual blades of grass on the, on, on the floor, and we look at the forest rather than the trees. It's um, a metaphor. Everything is in metaphor, and that's the most important thing to always remember. It was Gregory Bateson, one of my professors, that once said, what is your metaphor but to serve your paradox? And now, of course, then what I had to do was have a big meadow with a bunch of ox out in it, two oxes. <laughs> your paradox. You, have, you, you are doing some work in agriculture and farming now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should explain that. Uh, that, when I left the military, uh, I was appalled at what research I was doing. I was not ashamed, but appalled that I was developing weapons of mass destruction with mind control and things like that, that what I decided to do was leave that field and become a dirt farmer. And so I went into agriculture and became a herb farmer and found a tremendous gift of talking to the earth with my hands. You know, just putting my hands in the soil was so rewarding for me that I chose to go in that direction. You know, it was uh, Dennis Kucinich that eventually started calling me the postman because what I do now is I network rural communities uh, that are all over the United States. Uh, Kucinich had, when he brought me back, he did a three-hour interview with me on his radio station, and he had uh, eight rural communities in four states that he wanted me to network with. One was in Wichita, Kansas. Another one was over there in Ohio. And, and what I did was try to teach them how to barter and trade, like this group is doing this and that group is doing that. How do we interface these two so there's a mutual admiration society where we grow with each other and we support each other's movements and or goals? And uh, that is what's happening in America today uh, is there is a networking now of rural communities that are producing food. In fact, I'm a pretty strong supporter of suggesting, like Rudolf Seiner, that, you know, we are what we ate and that the foods we're eating are so bad that what we need to do is get back to basics and build a physical body from which to launch our spiritual body. That if you can't be spiritual, if you do not have a healthy physical body, there's no way that can happen. And so it's and because the spiritual body is the physical body. It's a manifestation of the one to the other. And the non-local part is how much outside your body you are. You are radiating electromagnetic fields. There's things called pheromone and other kinds of signals that you're sending out into the universe that other people can pick up. You know, a woman will walk in the room from the other side. You don't smell her, but somehow every eye is on her. What is that about? How does that work? Uh, what's going on there? And it has to do with the fact that our body does not stop at the layers of skin, but in fact have signals and dialogues going outside the body. And in fact, the universe outside is in fact talking to you as well, giving you your so-called intuitions and gut responses to things. And what your ch challenge is to do is to somehow find a way that you can bring that into consciousness and use it as an active tool rather than just a driver with no awareness. And that's going to take a lot of work. And that is the challenge of our society today is to take personal responsibility for our own personal growth. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been speaking with Richard Allen Miller, the author of ESP Induction Through Forms of Self-Hypnosis. He's an author, a physicist, a biophysicist, an herbalist. He can be reached at richardallenmiller.com. And Richard, is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience today? Well, okay. First off, my middle name is A-L-A-N. Rather, there's many different ways to spell Allen, so it's Richard A L A N Miller uh, dot com. I have other uh, 
websites, we developed 